afternoon. I'm Carrie. I'm from the North Museum of Nature and Science. We have recently changed our name. Uh, we have renovated, if you haven't been to the North Museum, uh, four million dollars will get you a nice facelift after 65 years. We have a lot going on over there. We have the newest technology actually available in the world right now, and our, our, planet, our planetarium is now the Psydome Theater. So uh, you'll need to come and visit, and I'll give you a back, uh, t background tour if you'd like to come and visit. Be happy to do that. So um, one of the things I brought with me today is our quantum levitator. Uh, it's the newest technology that's being developed right now in Tel Aviv. Uh, we actually got this from the University of Tel Aviv in Israel, and the developer um, knows how it works, but not why it works. So I will demonstrate it for you, and you can make your own assumptions about that. So uh, one of the things I, I need to start here, I have some liquid nitrogen, um, so I need to get this in my bowl. So give me one second. This is my giant thermos of liquid nitrogen. Because it's so cold, I have to just make sure that it's, oops, careful. <laughs> Sorry. No, no Terminator here today. I taught middle school for 20 years. Now I get to have fun. So um, this is informal education so much better. So uh, one of my favorite things to do is to have this out on a table and get lost in the clouds. And usually it's the parents who come running up and say, oh, look, kids, it's dry ice. And I think this is why we have misconceptions, because Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, and this is liquid nitrogen, completely different element. Same effect, they see the fog, they get confused, it's okay, I'll fix it. <laughs> so one of the things I like to teach the children, this is my handy dandy thermometer, uh, we talk about how cold it is, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, freezing, it can snow, you probably wear a coat out to recess, um, it's chilly. Uh, negative 180-ish is about dry ice, so you can still touch it with your hands quickly, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, liquid nitrogen is about negative 320, so it's the coldest thing on Earth. And uh, I'll put my hands in it, but I wouldn't recommend that you do that. Just quick, you can go fast like that. You have enough oil and water on your hands to do that. Um, so let me demonstrate this. A lot of times kids say, ooh, that's a, a teapot for, for hot tea. And I like to demonstrate that this is actually boiling at room temperature. And to be able to show them that, usually, it's kind of interesting. Weird concept, because it's super cold, but it's really boiling. And then I always ask one of the boys to put their tongue against there, and they, they, <laughs> they clearly haven't seen Christmas Story, so. They, and it's always the boys who want to go right up with their tongue. I'm like, get away, you're, you're a teenage boy. Um, so I had my daughter blow this up earlier, and uh, one of my favorite questions is, what is in here? And the kids always say, helium. No, she's not full of helium. She's just full of air. And this is a... Uh, completely safe to breathe because you breathe mostly nitrogen. 78% of what you breathe is nitrogen. So there's some nitrogen in here, some oxygen, carbon dioxide. And uh, when you put gas into something cold, the gas is going to condense. So this is a fun little demonstration. I like to show kids what happens to gases. Sort of like at recess when you're cold and you huddle, huddle up with your buddies to try to stay warm. This is what happens to the air molecules inside here. My preschool favorite is, have you ever heard a crunchy balloon? And they say, Yes, like you're four. When have you ever heard a crunchy balloon ever in your life? So the air doesn't leave, but it does condense. And I can quickly bring it back to life. So I can do that a couple times before it pops. One little girl said, it's not going to pop, is it? I said, no, honey, it's never popped. Right then and there, right in her face. <laughs> Squealed like a, uh, that, not the effect I was looking for. But um, it does that because it's in a flexible material. And so one of the demonstrations I like to do is a rubber band. If you put a rubber band in liquid nitrogen, it simulates what they do with tires. When they recycle tires, they put them in liquid nitrogen, or at least they're supposed to, not put them in the river. But they do um, put them in liquid nitrogen, and then they get you know, big hammers, and they can break them up. And um, very quickly, it becomes brittle. And when it comes back to its normal room temperature, it's flexible again. So they can use this for playground material or um, Turf fields, which they're finding now, is not such a great idea. But tires are kind of dirty and full of chemicals. So, all right, let me put this aside. I'm going to pour this in here. Whoops, don't go away. My balloon is leaving me. There we go. All right. Um, there's a couple other things I want to show you about liquid nitrogen, and I'll get to the fun stuff. Um, one of the chemistry lessons I learned very quickly in front of AP seniors at a high school um, Pennies, made of copper long ago. I used to put them on the railroad tracks. Don't do that, it's dangerous. 
Um, right now, they're made of copper-coated zinc. And in 1982, they stopped putting as much copper in the penny, and it became even more brittle. Um, so if I throw that in my liquid nitrogen just for a couple seconds, I can uh, make it brittle enough. Let me get my safety glasses on here. And I can show children that inside the penny, if I can get it out of here. I'm going to stick my hand in there soon. Uh, there we go. Whoops. There we go. If I can break that open. Sorry. Is this table made of metal? <laughs> Sorry, I hope so. And inside the penny, you can actually see that it's white. Zinc is actually what's in uh, sunscreen, so the kids can usually guess that it's white inside. Once that warms up, you'll be able to see that that's white inside there. All right, let me get a little more of this in my uh, holder here. Okay. Don't waste. This is only about $15 to fill this doer. It's not too bad for demonstration purposes, but it's about $800 for the doer, so not real convenient for you to have in your house. Plus, you need a license, which I didn't have when I taught, so this is the fun part. Um, so one of the things I like to show students, too, um, these are bimetal strips. There are two different metals. One responds to cold, one responds to hot. And inside your thermostat, they're wrapped around the switch. So when they expand and get warm, it'll turn on your air conditioning. And when they cool and condense, they turn on your heat. So that's typically how they work, even the new automatic ones. So if I put this in liquid nitrogen just for a couple seconds, um, I ask the children what they think is going to happen, and they make all kinds of predictions. And in, in just a few seconds, you can see that they start to curl. Um, I'll leave them in there for a little bit longer. And then when I bring them back out, I lie them on the table, the students usually can guess that they should straighten out if they warm up. So they're responding to the cold, and uh, it's kind of cool effect. I didn't get a chance to bring my banana hammer today, unfortunately. So that's always a fun trick, too. I can actually nail things into, into my wood. All right. So on to the quantum levitator. Um, should I move that? Sorry. There we go. Okay, so I have a ring of neodymium rare earth magnets here. It's about 120 of them. And they're only offering a magnetic field. This is not magnetism like the refrigerator magnets that you use. This is just offering a magnetic field for um, my superconductor. And inside my little packages that I have wrapped here sitting in my liquid nitrogen, um, this is a wafer of sapphire, uh, a superconductor metal called yttrium barium copper oxide, and it has a layer of gold on top. So it's about 1,200 bucks for this. It's about a half a micron thick and it holds 80,000 times its weight. So levitating cars in the future could be possible, and I'll demonstrate how they're looking into that. Um, this is not maglev. Maglev is uh, what they're using in trains right now in Europe, and magicians use it when they levitate someone. This is superconductivity, so it works a little bit differently. So I have my ring of neodymium magnets. Um, this is not a magnetic metal. This is a superconductor metal. So when it gets super cold, it releases properties in here that act differently. And only while it's cold will it do that. So I put a little sponge in, in the liquid nitrogen to keep the superconductor colder longer, to keep the effect longer, because as soon as it warms up, it goes away. So I wrap it in tin foil because tin foil is not magnetic, if you didn't know. A lot of people say, what's metal? It's, it's not magnetic. And when I put it onto the track, that happens. <laughs> That's where you go, ooh, everybody, ooh. It's kind of a cool effect. Now, I'm giving it energy. A lot of kids are like, oh, look, it's flying. It's really not flying because it doesn't have any propulsion except for me. It doesn't have an engine, doesn't have any drag. Um, it's not floating either because it's not lighter than air. So it actually is levitating. It's actually locked into place. Um, the quantum inside there is the usable energy in that item. Any, any usable energy in any item is a quantum. And so what it's doing, it's temporarily locking it in on that magnetic field. The magnetic field is holding it uh, where it needs to be. So I can position it any way I wish and send it around. Now, it only levitates at, oops, they're piggybacking. Um, it only levitates at this height because of the diameter of the disk itself. So if you think about the future of transportation, larger disk, a lot more expensive. Um, I try to tell the kids it's like microwaves in the 1980s when they were really big and they were $1,000, and they kind of look at me like I have three heads. But the teachers always know what I'm talking about. So when he warms up, he, yep, he's going to be, it's like Superman and kryptonite. It kind of loses its, loses its oomph there. So one of the things they're working on right now um, in Tel Aviv, a lot of universities have these. We are the only science education center in the world that has one. Just wanted to make that clarification. Um, but MIT has one, of course, and they're working on all kinds of stuff. They have a, a roller coaster that they're actually working on right now that uses this technology. And there's an elevator right now they're working on in Europe. Um, I 
forget which country, but they're working on it over there. But this is what they're thinking about for, for us, you know, maybe from New York to California, kind of doing one of, one of these things. And I'm only going to hold my hand under there because it's like a $1,200 desk. And I don't want to lose my job because I kind of like it. So that's what they're thinking, like the hanging kind of technology. But it's, oops, I'm dripping liquid nitrogen everywhere. So it's kind of a neat effect if you can see it's not touching me. And uh, one of my new toys, oops, he's done. Let me cool him off again. One of my new toys I just got because I broke my old one. You know, these are like $400. You don't want to break these. It kind of makes up people upset. Um, one of my new toys is my circular magnet. And it actually will pivot on the center of the circle, and it'll stay pinned in place and not touch. Ooh, <laughs> that's your key. Ooh, yeah, it's very exciting. Oh, I can make it go really fast too. It's kind of neat. And again, this is not, this is safe to to breathe in, but it's it's not safe to have around the public just yet because it can be dangerous to touch. So they're trying to figure out ways to do that and. Uh, they're working on that in, at the University of Tel Aviv right now. Oops. All right. Okay. Thank you very much.